Well, good morning, and uh, it's good to see you all. It's, a, it's been a strange morning, but I guess we have those once in a while. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our songs. I'll lead the first couple, and then uh, Brother Joseph will come and lead us in uh, some of the others later. So let's go ahead and stand for our first song, Oh, the Blood. It's been a while since we've sung this one. I hope it's not too unfamiliar. But we'll go ahead and start with singing our first song, Oh, the Blood. Oh, the blood, crimson love, price of life's demand, shameful sin placed on him, the hope for every man. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes shed for me. What a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood, it is my victory. Save your son, holy one, slain so something we like to talk about, is it? Yeah, I, I don't know how many of you are in the medical field, but I, I wasn't cut out to be a surgeon. I'll tell you that. I don't like seeing blood, but I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Uh, let's go on and sing our next song, a little a chorus here from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved... Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Let's try that again. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He 
that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. In our marriage class this morning, we were talking about challenges. Make it hard sometimes to express that love, but we are told to love one another because we have received the love of God. I'm thankful for that. Thank you for learning new songs for those of you that this was new and for digging back in those computer files of your brain to find the songs we sung a while ago for those that it wasn't new. But thank you for that singing in our opening prayer this morning. Our, we have a missions focus each week. This week it is on uh, Pastor Yacente and his wife. They sent us an updated picture and they're in Musanze, Rwanda, starting a new church. They sent us a letter, an updated report that's posted on the notice board as you come in. So I'd encourage you to read that so that you can pray for them um, as well and know what you're praying for. But I'm thankful for our missions partners, for the way God is using them to spread the gospel here in these other parts of East Africa. Uh, we do have several missions partners around Uganda. This is our first outside Uganda down in Musanze, Rwanda. So we're praying for them. Uh, so let's open with a word of prayer, and then I'll invite Brother Joseph to come and lead us in our next song. Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for Pastor Yacente and for Miss Esther and Baby Jaira and the ministry that you've called them to there in Musanze, Rwanda. And I pray that you'd give them wisdom and bless in their service, even this morning there in Rwanda, that souls would be drawn to Christ and that Christians would be conformed to Christ. And Father, we pray the same things here for us. We want to be more like you. We want to love like you love. We want to be willing to sacrifice as you sacrificed for us. We didn't deserve it. It's that great love that we could never deserve. Your grace that while we were still sinners, you died for us. So we thank you for that hope that we have that's available for everyone we would accept that gift of eternal life. We pray now this morning that you would challenge our hearts, not through my words, but through your word, the scriptures, the Bible, and through your Holy Spirit that is going to teach us and convict us and challenge us. I pray for those that are still coming this morning. I know the rain has delayed some and there have been other challenges. I pray that you'd bring them safely here today. We pray for those that have been sick and our church family and in the families of our church people that you would continue to strengthen and heal and to restore them. We thank you that you are the Lord, our healer. And so we pray and, and lift up these, our friends and loved ones to you. And we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. You can go and be seated and I'll invite Joseph to lead us in our next song. Our next song is All I Have is Christ. Song number four, all I have is Christ. All right. I once was lost in darkest night, yet thought I knew the way. Thus in that promise, joy in life, I led me to the grave. I had no hope that you alone are able to your will. And if you have no love me first, I will refuse you still. But as I run, my help and Different to the cost you looked upon my helpless day and led me to the cross and I beheld God's love display you suffered in my place. You bore the wrath reserved for me. Now all I know is grace. Alleluia. All I have is Christ. Alleluia. Lord, I will. 
song might seem the strength to follow your commands could never come from me. Oh, Father, use my ransom life in any My soul forever be my only boss is you. Alleluia. All I have this Christ. Alleluia. for singing Pastor Dan. I don't know who keeps picking these high songs oh wait no I do know who keeps picking these high songs but you're doing a good job singing them thank you uh, for that effort and that worship a few announcements this morning again some are listed on the front of your bulletin upcoming events in the future I won't deal with many of those today but just a couple as we get started and uh, uh, as we uh, as we remember, today is the last Sunday of the month. We have uh, every su last Sunday after the service, we have a video from the series The Chosen. And so we'll be watching that today. If you're able to stay, it's a great time of being uh, just getting a better idea of what it probably was like for those disciples at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. It takes about an hour for the video, and then we talk about it afterwards for about another 20, 30 minutes. If you're able to stay, you are very welcome to do that today and every last Sunday of the month. Next week starts November. Can you believe it? Actually, Tuesday is November. And what's after November? Christmas. <laughs> Forget December. Christmas. Yes, we're ready. Just jump straight to it. Christmas. Less than two months, guys. If you are married, you need to begin thinking what you're going to buy your wife. That's your warning, two-month warning. Uh, but next month is November, not December yet. So in November, we will have at our 9.30 Bible studies, men will be over in this room, the ladies will be in the other room. And so that will be for the month of November. So look forward to those discussions. Marriage Fellowship. If you're married, this is for you. So Marriage Fellowship coming up on the 13th of November. And that's a Sunday two weeks away, just two weeks from now. And that will be in, uh, uh, Steve, are you Chimbeja or are you Churundambata? You're Chimbeja, right? Chimbeja. You're still Chimbeja, okay. <laughs> All right, on the border, okay. Uh, so Chimbeja, just here, not very far. How many of you know where my house is? It's nearer than that, okay? So you can get there. If we need to get a ride from church there, that's fine. We can coordinate that. But married people plan... I was told you can begin arriving as early as 3 p.m. Uh -huh. uh, and then we'll begin at 4 p.m. Uh, officially. But if you come at 3 p.m., they might give you, I don't know, something to mop or something, I don't know, something to chop. We'll see. But begin arriving at 3, marriage fellowship at 4 on the 13th of November. And then also November, we have these advisory meetings. I need your advice. I need your input as we look for things for 2023. And so I'm, I, I have some ideas. I also have some challenges that I need your ideas. And we want to share those together as we make plans for next year. So next Sunday on 6th, uh, those of you that are ushers or greeters, or if you're interested in serving in that role as an usher or greeter, we'll meet not very long. I'm hoping 15 minutes will be done next week right after the service. Two weeks, those that are teaching uh, the teen and adult Bible studies, or if you're interested in teaching as well, uh, please plan for that meeting, about 15 minutes. Then on the 20th, we'll have two simultaneous meetings. Miss Amy will meet with the children's helpers, uh, those that teach and help, or if you're interested in being involved in our children's ministry, that meeting will be for you. And at the same time, I'll be meeting with those that deal with the uh, media. 
If you are a multitasking member and you do both, go to the children's and I'll update you on the media later. Uh, and then the last Sunday of this month, those that have any background in finance or you've been involved in our finance team, we just are trying to think through some things, not make any decisions yet, but we just need some counsel, some advice. So that's coming up this month each week, getting us ready for the first Sunday in December, which is our servant leader uh, annual general meeting. So I appreciate your, your participation in those things. Um, next month, new month, new song of the month. Song is entitled, I Need Thee Every Hour. Does anybody know that song, I Need Thee Every Hour? I think we know the truth of it, right? <laughs> we need God every hour. And so the song, the song of the month, I Need Thee Every Hour, you can listen to a sample of that at faith.ug slash song. I don't produce these videos. I just hunt on YouTube. I think that one will work. And that will just give you a link, faith.ug slash song will take you to that sample so you can learn that. And next week, you'll be ready to sing along with the rest of us. Because I'll tell you, we have a guest preacher next week. Uh, there's a pastor from the US that's come. He's with Pastor John Basolo in Mbali this week. And he'll be with us next Sunday morning. And so we don't want to sound like we've never heard the song. Right? So this is your yeah. encouragement to learn that and practice it this week. I need thee every hour. Today is our Building Fund Sunday. We are giving, uh, we ha in your bulletin, you should have found an extra envelope for the Building Fund. So everything that comes in that will be set aside for Building Fund. We have a lot of building to fund, right? Uh, and so just a reminder for that. But we also have some other opportunities we mentioned. Steve, are you coming? Or you're not coming? I'm supposed to say something? We will, we'll come back to that. We're going to table that point and we'll come back to it later. Um, our regular tithes and offerings, you can get the envelope. And if you mark tithe, it goes for tithe. If you mark missions, uh, any other thing. But if it's in the building fund envelope, automatically it will go towards building fund. Same with the missions envelopes uh, that's there. We, we promised the building committee, I say we, the building committee promised last time that there will be some... Uh, items available for purchase, so I will let Steve show you what is there. We have polo t-shirts. We have polo t-shirts here, branded by, by me. Uh, you can see our logo, it's beautifully placed. And also there's v-neck t-shirts like this one. Uh, you can also go for round neck t-shirts if you like. Uh, we're also thinking of putting scriptures behind or just leaving it like this. That is still on discussion and I think, uh, I don't know, maybe the, the committee will decide on the prices of this. Maybe they will discuss you guys later, but so far these are the samples. High quality t-shirts. I could uh, pass around and you feel it. Maybe we'll have it at the reception after. All right. Try it on. All right. So there are, I think, four, four colors of t-shirts available and three or four colors of the polos. And uh, we've been trying to negotiate a very good price. And so I think they'll be uh, readily attainable for anyone who's interested. And so we'll have those coming. Now, I would advise you don't handle and sample the t-shirt the right now because it's being worn. That might be a bit awkward, but you can look at it and admire and uh, we'll, be, we'll be getting information together about placing orders for that. I think I've spent enough time on our announcements, so let's stand and greet one another and then we'll continue on with our service.
All right, I can see people enjoying the fellowship. Amen. That's wonderful. So I'm going to sing song number six, Facing a Task Unfinished. Song number six, you can be seated for this one. <laughs> All right, okay, look. Song number six, Facing a Task Unfinished. Facing a task and finish that drives us to our knees. A need that undiminished rebukes our slothful ease. We will rejoice to for singing. I request us to stand up as we have our scripture reading. I request all of us to stand up. And if, if you have need to borrow a Bible, Pastor Dan can help with that. Uh, and our scripture reading is found today in the book of John. If you need to borrow a Bible, both are there that can be used. Um, our scripture reading today is found in the book of John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. Again, that is in the New Testament to help out. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. The Bible reads, verse 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Verse 35, But this shall all men know, that ye are my disciples. If ye have, if ye have love one to another, may God bless the reading of His word. We will come, Pastor Dan. Thank you. Remain standing. We'll sing our song of the month. And we we added this extra bridge last week, and I just want to go over it again for those that weren't here. Um, before we jump into our, our song of the month, there's a bridge, you will reign forever. So we're gonna add that after the third verse. And so just be ready for that. Uh, Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises. 
is to rejoice. Behold our God, seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore him who has given counsel to the Lord who can question any of his words who can teach the one who knows all things who fathom any hundreds needs. Behold our God seated on his throne. Come let us adore him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. You will reign forever, you will reign forever. Seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore him. It is about him not about us. Thank you for coming this morning for your worship through song. Let's prepare our hearts. You may be seated as we open our Bibles back to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And we've been talking and discussing and learning the last two months about one another, how we edify one another, encouraging one another, and Back in uh, the beginning of September, our anniversary Sunday, Pastor Stanley Onyutha challenged us kind of introductory from our, from our theme of the year about loving one another. And so now as we wind up these two months, we're coming back to that topic of loving one another. Love one another. This way I can move around. Eric, could you turn me down just a little bit? Tiny little bit. Thank you. Uh, so we've learned over the last few weeks about the body of Christ, how we are joined together as members, one of another, different joints, different fingers, different uh, organs, if you want to imagine it that way. And I'll tell you, there's no part of your body that's not important. 
you can think that this tiny little thing doesn't matter, but if that gets infected, it's going to matter. You will remember that that part of your body affects the whole body. And so the same is true for us as a church. Every single person, every member is necessary. Every member is important. And so that membership, Ephesians 5.29 tells us that no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. it. It's caring for it. It's looking out for it. Um, how many of you have ever used a hammer and hit the wrong nail? Like not the metal one, but how many? Am I the only one? Yeah, we've done that. Your, this hand is not trying to hurt the other finger, is it? it? You're trying to be careful to not hit the hand, but it happens sometimes. And so we recognize those things can happen. But this hand is trying to avoid causing damage to the other hand. And that's how we are living as members of the body of Christ. John chapter 13 is an interesting portion, an interesting place in the book of John. Chapters 1 through 12 are talking about Jesus' early ministry. His baptism, his, his talk with Nicodemus, and all of those things early in Jesus' ministry for three, almost three and a half years. But from John chapter 13 all the way to the end, chapter 20, chapter 21 is the end of John, but from chapter 13 to chapter 20, those eight chapters all deal with one day of Jesus' life. It's kind of hard to imagine. The first 12 deal with three and a half years. The next eight, one day. Jesus' last day before his death and then the day of his death. So all these things that are happening in our minds, we feel like, oh, it's eight chapters. It took a long time. But the reality is this was all a very short moment. So in our passage today in John chapter 13, Jesus is explaining how he will demonstrate how he's going to show his love for us for his disciples and how we as his disciples should show that love to others. And so in John chapter 13, we're going to see several things this morning, just uh, by way of introduction, a preview here, we're going to realize that we need to know Christ's love. We sang earlier, he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. If I don't know God's love, I'm not going to know how to love others. In fact, 1 John chapter 3 tells us, if I could just summarize, paraphrase for you, if you want to know what love is, this is it. Jesus laid down his life for us. That's how we even understand anything about love is because of God's love. So we need to know God's love. Secondly, know Christ's command about love, his command for us to love, and then simply choose to love. Love is a choice, isn't it? Love is a choice. You can, you can go to cultures where marriages are arranged and you'll find a young man and a young lady that meet each other on their wedding day. I'm glad that's not how my culture was. I enjoyed getting to know Amy for several years before we got married from university and, and other ways. But um, there are those cultures where they meet on the wedding day and they must choose to love. It is a choice. And so we have to choose to love. But that word love is interesting. We hear it a lot, don't we? I, I can say I love my wife and I do. I can say I love my church, and I do. I love chocolate cake, and I do. But those are not all the same types of love, right? I love my wife very differently than the way I love chocolate cake. But don't say I don't love chocolate cake, because I do, all right? I enjoy it very much, um, sometimes too much. But anyway, uh, we won't go there this morning. So all true statements, but different types of love. You'll find youth that say, he'll say, this guy will say to this girl, oh, baby, I love you so much. They don't even know what love is at that age, right? 
they have no idea what true love is. They just think they know what love is because they saw some movies or something. No. Love. How do we know what love really is? Well, in the Bible, there are different words, two specific Greek words that we find frequently in Scripture. Phileo, which is a brotherly love, a friendly love. And then agape, which is a selfish, selfless, sorry, selfless, unconditional love. And we're supposed to have both types of love for each other. Uh, Not just in a marriage relationship, but as a family. And we apply this in our in our physical relationships that, you know, I love my brother. I love my uncle. And our church is also a family. We're a spiritual family, the body of Christ. So we need to have both of these types of love for one another. So first we said we need to know Christ's love. We started reading earlier in verse 33, but if you'll turn back to the beginning of John 13, still the same chapter, but verse number one, John chapter 13, Jesus says, now before the feast of the Passover, when he knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the the end. Let's pray as we get into the scripture this morning. Father, thank you for your love. Oh, how we've needed it and still need it every day. I pray this morning that because of your love, that you would pour out understanding for us. They would really see your great love for us and that you would give us that desire, that hunger to show that love to others, not so that they will appreciate us, no, because we're not the source of the love, but that it would draw others to you, the God who is love. That's our prayer this morning. Father, on top of that, we pray for those that are here and have never received your gift of love, that you give them that understanding and also the courage today to to come to you in humility and need and dependence to recognize how desperately each of us and that they would recognize they need that love for themselves and they would receive the gift of God, which is eternal life. Thank you for your love. Oh, it is such an amazing love by your grace. So we praise you and we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 13, Jesus starts and tells us because of his love, he's going to do these things. And and so already in chapter 13, by the time we get to our our passage this morning, we'll, we'll look more starting at verse 31. But Jesus has already washed the disciples feet. He has already um, had the Lord's Supper and he's already sent Judas out. Judas is gone to go and lead the chief priests, the Pharisees and temple guards to come and arrest Jesus. All of that has already happened. And now as Jesus death is approaching, if we look ahead to verse 33 of uh, John chapter 13, he says, little children, you could understand that as my dear ones. Yet a little while I am with you, you shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, You cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Jesus said there, little children, yet a little while I'm with you. Why just a little while? He knows what's coming up next. His hour is come, the time for his death. Through his death, he is showing his love for us and for all people in his death there. And. From our perspective, when we think of a cross, it's something really terrible. Eric, can you turn me down just a little more? Thank you. The cross is something that that we would want to run from. Um, it, It would be like if we had spears and pongas and machine guns as the symbol of our religion. What would people think about our religion? That it's all about violence and and hate and hurt, right? 
And that was the picture of the cross. It was a symbol of death. And it still is a symbol of death. The purpose, though, is that Jesus' death counts for our death. He took our place so that we don't have to die. He's saying, a little while I am with you. He knows his death is near. And from our perspective, we would think the cross is just terrible. But from God's perspective, it was revealing his glory. Because yes, Jesus would die, not because of his sin, but because of our sin. But God also knew what was going to happen next. Jesus would die on the cross. They didn't have to break his bones. They didn't have to do anything. He died on the cross. He was buried. And after three days, what? He rose again. God knew what was going to happen next and how he would be glorified. And praise God, nothing defeats him. Death couldn't hold him in the grave. Death did not defeat Jesus. Instead, Jesus defeated death. And so through the cross, God is being glorified and he defeats death. He defeats sin. He defeats Satan. He defeated the sin of us all. We see that in 1 John 2, 2, that everything he is the victor and we are free because of him. I'm thankful for the empty cross. Amen. I'm, I'm not really excited when I think about death. Honestly, I'm, I'm amazed at how many friends and friends of friends have had funerals lately. Uh, I'm just astounded at that. Death is not something I'm, I'm looking for, I'm not excited about, but I'm thankful that, yes, Jesus died, but he's not still on the cross. He was buried, but he's not still in the grave. He is risen and he's alive. And that is the Savior that offers to us eternal life. God is glorified and Jesus said, I'm going to be glorified. The hour has come for him to be glorified a little while. I'm with you. We see his death, but we also see his deity. His deity here. If we go back to verse 31 now, therefore, when Jesus was gone out, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. The son of man. The promised one back from the book of Daniel, not just a son of man, but the promised son of man, the deliverer that would come to pay for our sins. He'd been promised hundreds of years before. And that's why I have to say, yep, November starts Tuesday. And then next month, we just jump past December to Christmas because Christmas is God coming to be with us. Emmanuel. One of my favorite names of God, that God is with us. And you're saying, Pastor Dan, it's still October. Don't get on Christmas yet. Christmas is all the time because God came for us. I can't stop thinking of Christmas. And so Jesus, as the son of man here, he was the one who was promised. And there are several verses we could look at. Uh, I'll just mention them if you want to write them down. John chapter three, verses 14 to 15. We see that those who believe have eternal life because the Son of Man came. John 13, not John 3, I'm sorry. John 3, verses 14 and 15. In Acts chapter 7, we see in verse 56, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father's throne. The Father is there, Jesus Christ, at the right hand, the seat of power, the Son of Man. This is Jesus the Son of Man, which is glorified. Romans 1, verses 3 and 4 tell us that He is declared the Son of God with power because of the resurrection. Now, can you resurrect if you've not died? No. Kind of hard. You cannot have a resurrection unless first there is a death. I, I, I don't like to think about death. But Jesus had to die to pay for our sins. And without his death, there would be no resurrection. And it's in his resurrection that it is declared that he proves that he is that promised son of God. Jesus was living for God's glory. He died for God's glory. He rose again for God's glory. But dying. That, that's not a small thing. And the fact that the death that Jesus died, the crucifixion, 
historians that have studied, I don't know what kind of people study torture methods. I don't know why you'd want to, but people who do that say that the crucifixion was the most torturous death that they've ever found in history. I mean, don't you think, think Jesus could have chosen to come when death was just something simple? Uh, like in, in the U.S., when they execute people now, they have what they call lethal injection. They inject drugs into their body. It makes the heart stop. They die. It's done. It's over. You know, Jesus could have come when there were simpler deaths. But in the fullness of time, he chose to come knowing full well the most torturous death the Roman crucifixion. They were professional torturers and executioners. What a CV, right? So what, what did you do at your last job? Oh, I executed people, you know. <laughs> but Jesus came at that time to sacrifice himself for you and me. And we will not obey Christ's command to love one another if we live for our own glory. Jesus came to glorify the Father. And in fact, over and over, even though Jesus as the Son is God, the Son of God, He is equal with the Father, but He's still saying, hey, let me point you to my Father. He wasn't coming to point people to get attention for Himself. He's saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify who? The Father, which is in heaven. He told his disciples, when you pray, pray this way, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus, as God, was still pointing people to the Father. He wasn't seeking glory for himself. If we seek glory for ourselves, we will not obey Christ's command to love one another because I'll be loving myself. So I need to know Christ's love, what kind of love it was, a love that said, I'm going to seek God's glory, not my own. He did it through his death. He did it in his deity. Secondly, we need to know Christ's command. Verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. I think he wanted to make sure we didn't understand or didn't misunderstand the commandment. He said, love one another as I've loved you, that you also love one another. Twice in that one sentence, he's telling us to love one another. And notice in verse 34, he doesn't say, I have a recommendation for you. Is that what your Bible says? I'd like to make a suggestion that you love one another. Is that the, what is it? A commandment. It's not a suggestion. He's saying, this is the way it is. If you're going to follow me, love one another. Now, the example we have in John 15, uh, John 15, verse 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. How can we love that way? A month ago, we were illustrating God's grace and his love and his forgiveness we had I didn't bring more popcorn today sorry but we have that illustration that that because God's love is so abundant it's overflowing for us we are able we have the power to love so his command for us to love isn't just something that's impossible for us he empowers us and he overwhelms and overflows us with love so that we can love others. We have at the entrance here a, a hand wash station and we've probably all been someplace where you go and you turn the tap and nothing comes out, right? And then we've also been to the places where they have something feeding it and no one's watching it and it's filled and it's just overflowing out of the top, right? And so that's the picture I want us to have that we can be an open tap of God's love for one another. Because he's constantly filling us, even with the tap open, it's overflowing. Now, if my source is filling me faster than my outlet, the tap, will I ever run out? No. And God's love is constantly pouring over us and into us if we receive it. Now, if I put the cover on, 
You can pour as many buckets as you want. It's not going to fill. See, and God doesn't come with a, a drilling machine or a chisel and a hammer and say, no, I'm going to fill you with my... He doesn't force it on us. He offers it to us. Because forced love isn't love, it's abuse. And God will not abuse us. He says, I'm offering it to you. Will you open up your heart and receive my love? It's an offer. But he will not force it because he loves you too much. But when we receive his love, we find it an abundant love that is filling us and overflowing so that we can give his love out and we never run dry of his love. In Luke chapter 7, I'll turn there and just read briefly an account in Luke. Still in John, give me a moment. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Jesus is at Simon's house and there's a woman that's come and she's washing his feet. And Simon says, uh, Simon is questioning it and, and Jesus tells him that Simon, when I came, you didn't give me a kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you didn't anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Notice verse 47. He says, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth. Little Jesus isn't saying she was forgiven much because she was uh, she was she was forgiven because she was showing so much love. He's saying the love that she's showing demonstrates how much forgiveness she's received because our forgiveness comes out of God's love. And so we are commanded to love. Jesus has commanded us to love, but he has also demonstrated that love. For us back in John 13, he says a new commandment I gave and given to you that you love one another. How? As I have loved you. He had just told them and, and reminded them that he's going to die for them. Now, honestly, the, the disciples still were a bit clueless at this point. They're like, what? You're going to you know, when he was arrested, you're going to die. No, no, no. Peter had even said. No, it won't happen. I won't let them kill you. Peter, got to love Simon Peter. Uh, he said the things most of us would have. Uh, but Jesus is telling them that very evening, I'm going to die and one of you are going to betray me. But the hour has come for me to die. I'm going to show you the greatest demonstration of my love. So as I have loved you, love others. Let's imagine we said earlier, Jesus in this day that begins in John 13 and goes through John 20, that evening there, Jesus began by washing the disciples' feet. Who are the apostles? Who did, whose feet did he wash? Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Bartholomew, and Judas. Judas? Jesus, don't you know who this guy is? Mm-hmm. Don't you know what he's about to do? Mm -hmm. And what did Jesus do? I'm going to wash your feet too, Judas. Jesus, he's going to stab you in the back. He's going to kill you. He's the reason you're going to... No, all of us are the reason Jesus died. We tend to think of Judas as so much worse than, I don't know, maybe Andrew that's always bringing people to Christ. Uh, he's so much worse than John. I mean, we're reading the Gospel of John. Surely Judas was terrible compared to John. No, all we like sheep are gone astray. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus demonstrated his love equally. <coughs> Judas rejected it. Jesus knew he would, but he still washed his feet. He still broke bread and dipped together with him. Shared the table. Judas, what you're going to do, go do it quickly. Jesus knew what was going to happen. And he still died. For Judas, if Judas had accepted Jesus' love, Judas did not have to do that. Jesus would have died. 
But he knew Judas' choices and used them to accomplish his purpose and loved him even unto the end. Love one another as I have loved you. You and I, we were all condemned to die because of sin. We're judged. In God's judgment, we are condemned. But Jesus Christ took our place, died on the cross, paid the penalty for our sin, so that He could give us His life in exchange. He sacrificed Himself for us. Do we have that same kind of love for others? I think of Moses. God, let me be accursed, but redeem these people. And yet we let little offenses come. We talked about forgiveness again in our marriage class, so it's on my mind. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, it's better for us to suffer than to let the name of Christ suffer. We need to have that love that sacrifices ourselves, sacrifices our reputation, sacrifices our pain, sacrifices our time, sacrifices all that we have. Not for that person's glory or my glory, but for the glory of God, for the name of Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, we are made righteous. We were wrong. He makes us right. He doesn't permit us or encourage us to sin, but like the woman that was caught in adultery. Remember, they, they, they said this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. I still wonder, where was the guy? Jesus, what should be done to her? Moses said she should be stoned. What do you say? (laughs) I'm not yet like Christ because I don't think I would just be like, "Hmm." I I would have had some things to say. If I knew who they were, I think I would have had some things to say. I'm not yet conformed to Christ. Hopefully I'm conforming and that's our goal. One by one, they left and Because Jesus said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. They left and he looks at the woman and says, woman, where are thine accusers? And she said, there's no man, Lord. And did Jesus say what you did? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Is that what he said? No, No. he said, go and sin no more. He never excuses our sin, but he is gracious. He is forgiving. He is loving. And he's willing to take the punishment on himself in order to show the love. We don't encourage sin, but we can be forgiving. That's the kind of love that God has for us, the love we can have for others, the command that He's given to us. And when does God love us? How many hours in a day? Beginning at what time? There's no beginning and there's no end. It is infinite. It is eternal. What about our love for other people? Hmm. It shouldn't be, but it is limited. It can be conditional, which isn't God's love. But God's love, it is constant. It is always on. It's full time. He doesn't have business hours. Aren't you glad God's not the bank? (laughs) You know? Nine o'clock and they're still looking for the key to open the door, right? Sorry, those that are in banking, but, you know, uh, oh, public holiday, Oh, another public holiday. Oh, we're going to make up a holiday. Anyway, God doesn't do that for us. He's always there for us. What about our love? It's not easy. We must choose to love. Choose to love. Verse 35, he says, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. What's the next word? If you have love one to another. Which means sometimes we will and sometimes we won't. His command is for us to do it. And when we do it, people are going to say, wow, that's different. There's something different about these people. Isn't that what Jude tells us to do? And if some have compassion, making a difference. God's love is so foreign to this world. When we love with his love, people are like, are you serious? You're just going to forgive? You're just... You're going to sacrifice that? The world will identify us as Christ's disciples when we love, not loving in word, but loving in deeds. We will be known. People will know that we are his disciples. Does love make me his disciple? 
No. But if I'm his disciple, it should make me love. It's the result of who I am. And people, oh, you must be one of those Christians. You're forgiving. In fact, it's not uncommon when, when you're out and you do something kind. Maybe somebody drops 20,000 shilling, you know, and you say, hey, Mose, is this yours? People say, are you a born again? Right? They just assume there's something different about us. They're going to know us by our love. We'll be, we will be known, but we will also belong. Not only will the world identify us, the church will identify us. We will fit in the body. There, there's a story from the 1700s. No teenagers, that's not my... I wasn't alive then. Okay, I was born in the 1900s, not the 1700s. But anyway, back in the 1700s, there was a soldier that was arrested and condemned for his crimes. I don't know what he had done. But there where the army was stationed, this is in the United Kingdom, I believe, and uh, they had a curfew bell every night. They would ring the bell. That was curfew. All the soldiers were supposed to be on base by that time. And this soldier was sentenced that, that this evening when the curfew bell rings, then you will be executed by being shot. Well, this soldier... He, he had a, a lady that they were planning to marry. Uh, Bessie was the girl's name. She was the daughter of a farmer. No one significant. And the soldier's name was Basil. Basil Underwood. These are real people. And so that evening, it came time. Uh, that afternoon, she went and was pleading with the, the people, don't, don't shoot this boy. I love this boy. I want to marry this boy. And like we, the law is there. The sentence has been given. When the bell rings, we have to shoot him. So it came time for curfew. I don't know what time it was, maybe 7 p.m., maybe 8 p.m. They pulled the rope. No sound. They pulled the rope again. No sound. The boy was supposed to be shot when? When the bell rings. They pulled the rope. They kept pulling that rope on that bell. No sound. They couldn't shoot. So they investigate, they go up, and they find this girl, Bessie, holding on to the clapper of that bell. And so as they pull the rope, it's swinging her body into the side to that bell, breaking her bones, bruising her body. They bring her down, they bring her to Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector of England, who was there, to explain what she had done. She shows, she, he sees her body, the bruises, and when Cromwell saw her devotion and saw her love, he said, your lover shall live because of your sacrifice. Curfew shall not ring tonight. You know, Jesus sacrificed himself. He knew the judgment. He knows the time. And he was willing to die for us much more than what Bessie did for Basil. But because of his sacrifice, he took our punishment. He took our pain. Judgment is still done. God transferred our debt to Christ. Christ has paid it for us. And we can be free of our sin by faith. So as we read earlier, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. What will we sacrifice for love? Hey, you mess with my kids. You mess with my wife, you'll see some of the things that I'm willing to do. I'm willing to sacrifice some things for love. What kind of love do we have for each other? Hey, there are going to be people that try to come in and, and break up the church. To break up the love that we have. How much are we willing to sacrifice? No, this is my brother. This is my sister in church. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what they've done. I'm going to sacrifice for them. Are we willing? What are we willing to sacrifice for love? Jesus didn't recommend. He didn't suggest. He didn't give some advice for us to love. He says, a commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Have you received that love? <laughs> it is a wonderful love of Christ. He died for us. 
paid the price for our sin and freely offers the gift of eternal life, His righteousness. Have you received that love this morning? If not, oh, what a great day. We don't know when the judgment is coming. Bessie knew what time curfew rang. She was able to sacrifice herself. We don't know when curfew is ringing. And Jesus said, I've already paid for you. Will you accept his payment? If you have, what are you willing to sacrifice? Well, I'll, I'll give this. I'd be willing to do up to this amount or help in this way, but shouldn't it all be on the table? Love as I have loved you. Will you stand with me as we close this morning? We're going to sing a closing song in just a moment, but before we do, I want to ask, perhaps there's somebody here today, and you'd say, Pastor Dan, I, I've never received that love, but I'd like to. If that's you, we would love to talk with you. I'm going to ask you, as our service ends today, you can meet me in this room here. Um, give us a chance to talk and if it's a lady I'll I'll give you to one of the ladies in our church if it's a gentleman either I or another gentleman we'd love to talk with you about that great love of God that you can receive freely as his gift his forgiveness his righteousness we all need it we all need it we are all enter we all enter this world condemned because of sin but we can leave this world righteous because of Jesus Christ. Christian, when we think of sacrifice, what limits are there? Would he say, well, I, I wouldn't do this for a brother. Why is that? Can we make the choice today? Jesus, you said to love the way you love. I'm willing. I don't know how God will give you the opportunities to show that love. It doesn't sound like it's something easy but are we willing to love as he loved not for our glory not so people appreciate us and say oh this is such a good Christian no it's not about a good Christian it's about a good God because where do I get love to show you from him are we keeping it for ourselves are we sharing it with other, others? Heavenly Father, whew, your love overwhelms us when we really honestly think about it. We don't deserve it, but we're desperate for it. Without it, we have nothing but condemnation. We might have successes. We might have things that we can be boastful about, but all of those are temporary. They die with us. It's only your life that is eternal. So Father, I pray for those one or two that are with us this morning, they've never received that gift. Give them courage to come and talk to us or to someone that can open the Bible and show them your gift. It's not our gift to give, but you have given us the opportunity to tell others about it so we Look for those opportunities. We pray for those opportunities. We pray for others to be saved, to know your love. But Father, they're not going to have a hunger for it if they don't see it. So I pray that you would demonstrate your love through us. Automatically, we would assume that means there will be challenges because love sacrifices. Father, show us how we can be sacrificial in our love. Give us that grace to do it so that the glory can go to you. Keep us humble. Keep us hidden. Let people see Christ because he is the hope, not us. He is the way, the truth, and the life, not us. And so we pray these things because you are worthy of all praise and glory and Thine is the glory and the power. So we pray this in Jesus' name to you, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Our song